again, that is the second part of R for chapter 7, moving beyond linearity. And in this chapter, or in this session, we are going to talk about many interesting techniques, including splines, including splines, different types of splines, natural splines, um, smoothing splines. Then we are going to talk about local uh, regression models. Then we are going to talk about gen general, uh, general additive models. So there is a lot of things to cover. And I assume you've already watched the first part because I'm not going to spend that much time on building up confidence intervals now because that's the same thing. You just need to follow the same steps we followed in the very first part of this chapter. So my assumption is you already know how to deal with, deal with SE function and how to multiply it by 2, put it in vectors, and just draw, draw it based on math lines. So that will be my main assumption here. So if you um, forgot to do that, um, please go back and watch that. Otherwise, uh, for those specific sections, I go slightly fast on it because there's a lot to cover. Okay, so the first topic I'm going to um, cover is splines, uh, which are three types of splines. We have smoothing splines, we have natural splines, and uh, the cubic splines, so let's start with the easier one. In order to use splines, we need to um, use a library called splines, and if you don't have it, please install it right now. So, install packages splines, and just uh, make sure you're connected to internet. Is It's going to find that. It's not available for Okay, oh, that's weird. Um, splines. It should be available. Let me see if it is. Okay, so that was a default. Uh, so this library is available as default, so you don't even need to install it. Okay, that's good news. So we have library splines, and we have to use library ISLR because we are going to use some of the data sets there. And we have to use, uh, we are going to use data, uh, data wage. Um, I, I, I described what capital letter wage is in my previous video. Please, um, please go and uh, review that video for wage. So we have very uh, different values for, uh, we have different variables and we want to predict wage based on that. Um, so, the, the easiest spline we can have is just simple spline. So let's work on the, the simple spline. The default is, uh, and for that you use you just use lm function. So you grasp wage, and the and the function you need to use in order to introduce splines is bs. I don't like its name at all, uh, but that's 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 just a normal spline. Um, in the first element of that, you should you should introduce the variable you want to use, and here we want to predict wage based on age. So that's why the first element of BS will be wage. I'm sorry, age. The second element are knots. Remember, in the splines we have different knots, so you should define it. Let's say um, we want to um, we want to split our data into four different regions. The first region are 18 years old to 25 years old. The, the next one are 25 years old to 40. The last one are six, uh, 40 to 60. And the last one are 60 to 80 years old. Remember, uh, the first element of age was 18. The, the highest age we had was 80. The data we are going to use is of age. OK. So we, we just fitted spline on uh, uh, Spline cubic spline of age on, on wage, so default is cubic spline. So if you do not change that, it uh, R assumes you're dealing with 
um, cubic spline and as I mentioned earlier that is the most famous spline so I, I would suggest do not play with that just keep it the way it is so let's look at the summary of that feed spline it gives a bit um, bunch of variables uh, there are six variables that are there um, because we have uh, three knots, so the degrees of freedom would be three plus three, which is six. Um, uh, and usually, when you have k, you have you have n knots. The degrees of freedom would be n plus three. We have three knots here, so that's that's why our degrees of freedom are six. So these coefficients are not that much important because uh, they're not that interpretable. Remember as as we use more sophisticated models, they're less interpretable, but they're very good predictors. So again, let's see how well our model is doing. Like the previous video, I'm going to find the range of age first, and then I'm going to produce a variable, it's called age grid, which is a sequence of the first element of range, which is 18 years old, to the second uh, value of rate, which is the maximum of age, which is 80 years. Again, if you have difficulty understanding that, please refer to my previous video. Um, I, I spend a lot of time on that, explaining what age greed does and what, what, it, uh, what it has. Basically, what it has is all uh, ages from 80, 18 to 80 years old. So 18, 19 years old, 20, 21, up to 80 years old. So now let's predict what our spline is doing. So predict splines would be predict our model was um, feed to spline. Okay. And our new data again, like before, is least. Um, of age equal to age greed. Again, I explained how what that means in my previous video. Please refer to that. And we are, we want to have um, standard real standard errors for that. So we want to we want to capture the standard error of the estimates of our predictions as well. So our prediction spline have the defeated models in addition to uh, the standard errors of our defeated models. So now that's the best time to draw that and see how it looks like. So let's first draw age on wage and, and see what is our raw data, what our raw data looks like. Our famous age wage relationship. Um, in order to add the confidence intervals there, uh, we need to introduce a, a band uh, which, which is the lower bound and upper bound of our confidence interval. The upper bound of our confidence interval would be the feeded model plus two times the standard errors. The lower bound would be feeded models minus or, or the minus two standard error of our prediction. Again, if you have difficulty understanding that, I explained it in very uh, in, in so much detail in the previous video. Please refer to that. Um, so that is C bind of our predicted values for a spline. In order to get uh, access to that, you need to use dollar sign feet. That gives you the feeded values for predictions for our splines. That is splines, okay. So um, I want to have the first element of that I want to be the upper upper uh, limit of the confidence intervals. So that's why I use SE feet. And for the second element, I want to have the lower bound of that. The only thing that will be different is put a negative sign here. So the fitted models minus two times predicted standard errors will be our lower bound. Okay, so let's run this model uh, sorry, let's run this command and see what it produces. Okay, 
So SE band has um, the upper bound of our confidence interval, the lower bound, and we have already captured the predictions and affiliated models. So let's first uh, draw our our predicted models uh, based on different values of age. We want to set the uh, length of our um, sorry the width of our line to two. So it will be um, be thick and let's set the color to be blue so that is our um, cubic spline line on our data if you want to add standard errors there uh, since there are two values inside it we have to use um, math lines that math lines make sure whenever you have more than one variable you just are able to uh, add that so we want to have our x value our age grid, our y variables would be SE bands. Uh, let's fix the color to blue. And again, um, like before, we want to have the, the line type to be um, broken lines. Um, Usually the confidence intervals come in broken lines. So that is our uh, faded spline. Again, uh, the normal splines do not show that much uh, good behavior at their tails. Um, so that's why we use more sophisticated splines to take care of the predictability of these two points, uh, these two areas. So this model has three knots. One knot is at 25 years. So let me... Uh, zoom in. So this model has three knots. One is at 25 years old, the other one was 40, and the last one was 65 years old. In each part we have uh, a third degree polynomial, but as you remember in the splines, since we enforce three constraints, the first one was continuity and the second and third one was uh, the first order derivative be the same and this point the second derivative would be the same um, that's 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 we get this smooth um, shape for our predictions that's a very powerful tool by the way uh, it's one of the most amazing tools people use it all the time but as I said this uh, usual splines uh, have very bad characteristics at their tails so let let me go slightly ahead and introduce natural splines. These are the splines that have all the characteristics of um, splines, but at these um, two regions, which are the tails, it makes sure it has a linear line, so it imposes two times two more, um, more um, constraints on it, and more degrees of freedom to it to make sure um, it is always linear at these two points, at uh, these two regions, so that the confidence intervals you get would be um, would be thinner. So let's work on natural splines now. So we can change degrees of freedom and also use natural smoothing, or natural splines, smoothing splines natural splines okay the the natural spline um, is ns in um, in r so if you want to use natural splines you have to use function ns so let me fit um, uh, natural spline in our data we call it spline 2 so that will be lm wage so again, everything is like before. Um, we only regress NS uh, of age on degrees of freedom four. Our data is wage. Okay, so our so now we we introduced a natural spline. So as before, we are interested to have our predictions here and see how. They do, and perhaps we just want to um, uh, 
we just want to draw these uh, fancy lines to it. So I just copy paste whatever we had. Earlier, we just call it prediction splines two. So we just change that. Use it feed of spline two. Everything else is just the same. So we have the predicted values for this spline. Uh, this time, uh, let's uh, let's draw a line for that, and this time let's draw it in line uh, in red so that you can see the differences. H is splines two. Prediction splines two. Okay, let's change the color to red so that we have an idea how it looks like. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay, and as you can see, um, it, it guarantees that at, at the boundaries you have these lines. So now let's estimate the confidence intervals for that as well and now once we once we um, draw these confidence intervals we will see the confidence that we get is hopefully uh, not, not that wide so let's let's do that I initially I was thinking not to do that but now I'm I'm seeing so much value in it so let me let me do that Nothing will be will change. Everything is like before. So, just let me just change the uh, names. So the prediction is plines two. Uh, sorry, S E feed, splines two, splines two. Okay. So everything is just like before. I just changed the names. Uh, that was the only thing I did. Okay. So now we just um, draw that on it. Again, we use math lines because SE bands 2 is, um, is, a, is a vector. So let's, uh, let's go make the color 2. Okay, so let's, let's zoom in and see what will happen. Okay, so look at, at the two areas of the, uh, at the end of these splines. The confidence interval is definitely not as wide as the confidence interval as the normal splines. The red one has a smaller confidence interval, both, both here at the beginning of the case and at the end. In the middle, the interpretation is almost the same. So if you're not sure whether to use uh, normal splines or uh, natural splines, my suggestion for you is to use uh, natural so, uh, splines all the time because um, it has all the characteristics that normal splines has but also has a very good uh, pre uh, extrapolation ability at the end as well the confidence intervals you get from here is so much better I suggest you use natural splines whenever you want to choose between the two cases okay uh, so now that's the time of smoothing splines Smoothing splines. Smoothing splines. In order to use the smoothing splines, you no longer can use LM. Here, you need to use smooth spline. So that's that's the only difference you have. Um, so you need to use smooth spline. Um, so let's call it feet smooth the spline smooth so the function you're going to use is called smooth spline smooth spline and um, you have to introduce the degrees of freedom and you should say what is your x variable what is your y variable and how many degrees of freedom you want to use uh, smoothing splines are perfect since you, you usually don't need to introduce the uh, degrees of freedom here. It's given to you. you if you do cross-validation, it's given to you. But, but for the sake of this example, let's keep it this way. Um, and also, um, let's, let's look up another smoothing spline. Here, we just want... 
R itself takes care of that. Again, I suggest you uh, let R do the cross-validation for you, choose the degrees of freedom that is the best. Um, and there is no guarantee that, there is no guarantee that uh, the degrees of freedom that we choose is, will be an integer number. It can, it's usually not an integer number. So we have these two fits. Uh, seems very doubtful. What is, that's okay. Uh, forget about that. Um, that warning. Um, because we had some, perhaps we had some duplications in our data that perhaps comes from there. So let's plot them. Uh, let's get get rid of the things we had before. So let's focus on our original data and see how these two splines look like. So lines fit SS, color red, and the length of that V2, okay. So that is how our, uh, our fit SS which has 16 degrees of freedom will look like. It's somehow weekly. So now let's look at the line that is fitted on SS2. Let's change the color of that to green. And LD, LD again equal to 2. So let me zoom in. Okay, uh, this green one is the uh, smoothing spline that has been designed based on the cross-validation. I, I, we will look at the summary of the model later to see what it gives us, but basically what it shows that the, the cross-validation gives us so much smoother uh, pattern than when we chose 16 degrees of freedom. It's just so much weakliness in data, perhaps because of the overfitting. Um, so, so let's see how, how many degrees of freedom our SS had. SS has 16 degrees of freedom. Let's see what are in our feet SS2. We have so many things. We have uh, so many things, including fitted value. We also have degrees of freedom. So let, we can have access to that. So let's look look up the degrees of freedom of fitted SS2. That is 6.794596. It's nonsense if you think about it in the same way that you would think about degrees of freedom in previous examples. But that's the optimal one that guarantees the optimal level of lambda. So that's a perfect thing to use. So. Uh, uh, again, when you want to use smoothing splines, always set cross-validation to true so that the, the values you get for your fitting data would be optimal. Okay, so now that's the time for local regression lines. It's local regression lines. Okay, um, the, 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 uh, the function we are going to use is called low SS. And uh, it has a very important parameter there, which is called span. Span is the neighborhood um, that is considered locally. So if you set the span to 100%, it will that that's just basically a linear regression line because every time it considers all um, all of our span, which is from our minimum to maximum. If you set it to 0.5, that means every time it should consider the 50% nearest neighbor, and from there find the uh, regression line and based on uh, the weighted uh, weighted least square regression line. And based, based on that predictive value that you will get at that point, if you set the span to 0.3, it will search for 30% of that. So, so here we are doing to, uh, we are going to consider two cases. Fit LRL. So the the function 
that is local regression line is LOS, low S. So you want to do that uh, regress wage on age, age and wage. So let's set the span to 0.2. That means every time consider 20% of the, the closest neighbor. So it will automatically does um, a weighted least square. That means it will put more weight on the values that are closer to it uh, than the ones that are further away from it. So let's predict LRL. So predict fit LRL is our model. Our new data is here. You should instead of list, you should write data frame. Uh, why I don't quite know, but I, I tried list, it didn't work, so just write data frame. And in this data frame, age is equal to age grid. Let's set S E S E equal to true. Okay, so let's do that. Perfect. So let's look over the values that this L R L is giving us. It gives us feet, um, standard error of feet, and many other values. Okay, so let's repeat that and do the same thing for um, the function with span 50%. So basically, I just change the names. Okay, we have two values. Uh, so let's just stick to the um, method we had before. Um, so we want to have uh, defeated model and we all just want to have the bands as well so I just use the same method we had before to predict the lower bound and upper bound of our uh, predictions so that is prediction LR LRL feet I'm not going uh, I'm not explaining because we did it a couple of times both in the previous lecture and this lecture so there is no uh, use for repeating it more than that. So SE bands, let's call it SVN, LRL is that, okay. And also let's, oh, predict, oh, that is predict LR, oh, okay. So that is, pre, it's not pred, it's called predict. Okay, so let me change that. So basically, I'm just changing everything we had before, but this time, um, based on our new model, perfect. And let's do the same thing for LDR, uh, LRL2. Okay, so the only thing I will be changing is the, are the names. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's run that as well. Okay, so now let's draw the raw data first. Raw data is plot age and wage with color gray. Uh, so let's have a line of our fitted model, this time blue. Let's 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 blue represent um, our uh, let's let's. As blue represent our um, pre predictions for our first uh, local regression line and red uh, represents our local regression line based on our second model so we just we just use the same same models we had before so we want to have age grid on prediction of LR L2 feet, okay, LRL feet, length 2, and color would be blue. So that is our first local regression line, which had to span 20%. So let's see how that works. That's a weekly shape. So let's, let's add the confidence intervals there. Again, I'm going to borrow 
the commands that we had before math line sorry i'm too lazy for that but uh, since i've explained how you do it i just change the names here and it does the work so i i shouldn't care that much about it and you should not either so uh, we are going to use se bands lrl instead of se bands 2 so let's draw that so that will be our confidence interval for our regression line and now let's repeat the same thing for linear uh, lo uh, local regression lines for um, for LRL2 so this time we want to draw that with red and then we zoom in in our picture uh, in this plot and see what it is okay so let's zoom in So model one, model one, which is the blue one, this more a viglier shape, considers only 20% of the data around your point. For instance, in that in 20, it considers 20% of the data around 20. Run a weighted linear regression, weighted. Uh, regression line that means it put more weight to the points that are closer to 20 less weight to the ones that are further away from it and uh, run a regression line and based on that regression line it finds verities so that that will be this blue point here so it moves the points from 20 to 80 let's say at 40 again it looks over 20% data around this line. In that line, it tries to run a regression line. And for this regression line, perhaps it finds this negative slope function. And then it predicts this point. So it does it over and over again. And, and the lower your, um, your area of search, the more weakly your shape. That's more flexible. It will be more local the chances of overfitting will increase. Here in the red one, each time, as you can see, the red curve is more smooth than the blue one. And it has slightly smaller confidence interval at these tails. Um, so that, that, that is because of the uh, fact that anytime it wants to run a regression line, it looks over 50% of the data around it. So that's about... Um, uh, local regression lines. It's a very powerful technique. How should we decide um, what a span we should use? Cross validation. So cross validation and bootstraps are the best tools we have. Cross validation for choosing the best model and bootstrap for estimating the standard error of any model that we are not comfortable with. Okay, so that's about uh, linear lo uh, local linear regression line. So our, our very last topic is about GAMs. GAM, the general additive models. General additive models, the state of the art technique. Here, you can, um, you can combine many different techniques that you had before. For instance, you can have a term that is nat natural smoothing, a natural spline. Uh, the other term can be smoothing spline and some of the other functional forms you use with polynomials and the last one is say um, local uh, log local regression lines. So you can combine many different techniques that you have in one um, in 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 one function and that's the beauty of this function in order to use gen uh, generalized additive models you should install package GAM okay it's trying to okay so it just installed that so we we need this library in order to continue okay so now uh, the library GAM is used it's relatively easy to use that, and thanks to R. So uh, before I continue, there, there are a couple of not notations that you should remember. 
S is for smoothing splines, smoothing splines. Okay, and S is for natural splines. And I'm talking about within GAM, these are the short, short abbreviations. Um, local regression lines are shown what, with LO. So these are local regression. And gener general additive models are used based on GAM. Okay, so uh, GAM file. So if you want to add anything in, 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 inside GAM, which is general additive models, Whenever you want to refer to smoothing splines, use S, other natural spline NS, and local regression lines LO. Okay, so let's try to. So now I am trying to estimate wage based on number of years, um, as a year of study. The second thing would be uh, the age of the person in our um, group. The last one would be the education. So on my first model, let's call it GAM1 would be the general additive model of wage on year plus um, age plus education. And the data we're going to use is wage. So this is not an interesting model. That's just linear model. So let's make it more interesting. So let's make that way more interesting. For instance, so let's use the natural spline for age. NASA is playing with four degrees of freedom for year. Let's use smoothing spline for age with five degrees of freedom. And education was a categorical variable, so I just leave it the way it is so it will become a, a factor variable here or a step function here. So GAM just estimated whatever we had. So if we want to and plot it and see what it looks like, do not use plot. So I, I intentionally use plot now to show you the outcome, which is nonsense. So if you want to, for example, see how age and wage uh, change with respect to each other, um, you don't get uh, that much, uh, that, uh, you, you don't get that much uh, clear uh, result. For example, if you want to see the um, standard errors, I want to make the color blue, use plot, you don't get that much interest, anything interesting. It's it's stupid function you get, it only shows one variable with the confidence interval, and it's not interesting at all. So, so if you want to represent the generalized additive model results, um, use slightly different techniques. So uh, one of the cases that I introduced earlier is that if you want to show, for example, three things simultaneously here or six things simultaneously here, you should divide this outcome into three different outcomes. Um, so, and 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 let's say we, we are interested to look at the effect of year on wage, the effect of age on wage, and the effect of education on age simultaneously, and then on three different um, on three different um, plots, then we, we should first tell R that we want to uh, split our um, plot window into three cases. In order to do that, the, the, uh, the, uh, the function you should use is called PAR, or P-A-R, PAR, and you just introduce the number of windows you want to have. For example, if you do it this way, Pro as C1 and 3, it will divide your outcome window into three windows. If you write 3 and 1, it will divide it into three windows like this. If you do it 3 and 2, it will, do, it will divide that by 2 and this one by 3, so you can have six figures inside it. Okay, so now in order to show the outcomes of GAM perfectly, Use plot.gam. That shows you the perfect outcome. First of all, you should divide your outcome based on the variables we have. Since I had three independent variables, I divided it into three uh, windows. Second, use plot.gam for beautiful pictures. 
beautiful graphs. So our model was GAM1. I want to look over the standard errors as well. Usually standard errors are also very important. And let's use color red. Let's see the outcome. The outcome is really amazing. Um, that's a very beautiful uh, outcome that shows you the individual contribution of individual variables on our outcome. That is the individual contribution of year on the outcome wage. There's the individual contribution of age on wage. There's the relative contribution of education on, on wage. And as you can see, um, it deals with all variables. This one was a categorical variable, therefore it deals with it, dealt with it as a step function. These two were quantitative variables, dealt with it as quantitative variables. This was natural spline that was usual spline. So, so the outcomes are perfect. So we, we were able to combine many different um, functional forms we had and many different techniques we had under one roof, and that was the roof of a general additive model. So let's look, look over the summary of GAM1. In summary, you would see a bunch of results, and so if adding that variable in that functional form or that uh, case is going to be significant here, it shows that the year, age, and education all significantly affected the world outcome. Uh, as you can see, you don't see any value for your variable because it doesn't make any sense in, um, in such um, gener generalized additive models. So one thing that is very handy is when you want to um, try and look over many different variables at the same time and see which one um, makes your model better than the previous one. So let's say you have many candidates. You have many candidates of models, and you want to choose the best one. Here again, you use ANOVA. So let's call it ANOVA in GAM. I introduced simple versions of ANOVA in an earlier video I posted online. So that the idea here is exactly the same thing. Well, let's say we have GAM version one, the general additive model of wage. It has a uh, natural spline of year and four. Sorry, age and five. Five degrees of freedom, and all only has education inside it. So the data he uses is wage. I, I just want to copy. I am lazy. I'm sorry for that, but I'm. I just want to uh, have an easier time. So that's why I copy paste. So let's call it GAM version two and version uh, version three. So in version two, I just add one more variable. And that is here. So let's treat the year as simple variable. So that is everything that was in first model as year on top of it. Here, on my third model, I want to use a more sophisticated version of year. And let's use natural spline of year. And let's, let's use um, degree 5. Uh, to make things more, uh, let's, let's make, make it degree 4. To make things slightly more interesting, let's do just uh, smoothing the splines for age. Nothing will change, it just um, it uses smoothing spline. Okay, so let me run these three models. Okay, so I have three models. Each model is uh, slightly more complex than the very first one. So now I can use ANOVA to to choose which model is the best. So my, my candidates are GAM V1, GAM V2, GAM V3, and here is the result. I found that my second model where it treated here as the base function instead of natural spline is the best, has the, the lowest deviance or um, lowest 
uh, residual based on the degrees of freedom he uses. It's more significant than anybody else. So that's why we use model two. So that, that's a very powerful thing. So you are trying to estimate which model is better than the other ones based on degrees of sophistication or degrees of flexibility of the models and you just add more variables one by one and you just put it in ANOVA it tells you which one is the best. That is so cool. I, I think that's, that's one of the best uh, things you can do. Uh, and if you, you can do it even more sophisticated, you can just say uh, use test F and I, I usually suggest that. Again, you, it gives you the F statistic for each one of these variables and shows that this variable, uh, this model is the best. The second model again became the best candidate. Okay. Uh, so we have evidence, we have evidence that our second model is the best among the three, among the three candidates. Okay, or uh, we can also uh, we can also uh, have our predictions, uh, and, and then we use the predict model. So um, everything is almost like the be like before. So you just like predict whatever you want to predict it upon. You just say I want to predict it based on that and that, and you just we can you can divide your data into test and training data and just use that test data or training data. You can do cross-validation, you can do bootstrap. So everything that was covered in the class can be done on GAM as well. So I'm not going to spend time on that part. That's almost the same as whatever we had before. Um, the, uh, so the, one of the things I want to add to this course is that adding local regression lines um, to GAM models. It's very simple. Let's say we want to treat age as local regression. So let me just borrow one of them. So let me borrow this one. So let me call it GAM local regression. So let's say for age we want to use local regression with a span 50%. So I just put LO, age, 50%. That's it. So it's as simple as that. So it says it's um, we, we're going to use local regression of age 5 as our predictor and everything else will be the same as before. So that, that's as simple as that. Uh, forget about these singularity things. Um, it's not that important. Perhaps if you just play with uh, local uh, with span it will be rectified. Okay, near singularity. Okay, singularity is something related to inverse of matrices. If the matrix doesn't have, um, uh, if it doesn't have, if the eigenvalues are not the same as the size of your matrix, these things will happen because it doesn't have an inverse function. Anyhow, it's not, a, not, not it's not about business. So what is in our business is that uh, we, if we want to add local regression lines here, we use LO. And finally, uh, let's use GAM for logistic regressions or for categorical variables. Recall variables. Again, everything is very easy. The only thing you need to use is, again, GAM. That is the, the, that's the function we want to use. Let's say we want to uh, use the trick we used in logistic regression in my previous video. So we want to change wage variable into high income people and low income people. High income people will earn more than 250. The low income will earn less than 250. And let's say we want to regress it on year, smoothing the spline of age and degrees of freedom five. Nat and, and education. Um, and the data we're going to use is, let's say, wage. And of course, um, let's say, uh, oh, and we need to 
Here, the only difference is we need to introduce family as binomial. That's the only difference using GAM when you have, uh, when you want to do something like the logistic regression has. Uh, you just need to introduce it as binomial. So it does the math for you. So let's plot it. So let's plot GAM LR SE true color green. Um, I think it doesn't show a good job. Okay. Oh, okay. GAM. What is GAM LR? Oh, GAM categorical. Okay, it shows the variables, um, different variables and confidence levels of that. Um, the variable here is the confidence interval for variable here is so funny because it has zero percent confidence, zero confidence here. So everything is absolutely sure that's that's what you get on 2006. This is what you get for probabilities, and that's a very large confidence interval for very low level of education. Those high school those who um, had less than high school education, their wages are so volatile, so we don't have that much predictability based on that variable for the probability that you earn more than 250. So here we covered a lot of things. You have a lot of tricks to use for when you have nonlinear functions. And remember, the truth is never, ever linear. So you have so many tools to work with, starting from simple one polynomials, logistic regression for polynomials, step functions, splines, natural splines, smoothing splines, local regression lines, and GAMS. So you have a lot of tools to use, and I hope you've enjoyed this section of the course. Thank you very much.